Well, now we've got to the point where we need to talk about harmonic analysis of this D minor chord. Because when you analyze a chord and how it can function in different keys, that then reveals the different scales that you'll use, not only for your soloing, but for extending the harmony and creating some interesting rhythm guitar parts. I want you to look at chart number four. Now, this is just a master major scale chart. I came up with this way back when we did Improvisational Toolkit. And there have been a couple of revisions. I hope these revisions get in on this course. The first thing I want to talk about is if you don't know any theory, it really behooves you to start studying the major scale and how chords are built off of it because it puts everything in these great little categories. And if you're watching this video and you've bought one of my videos, I would assume you're reasonably serious about getting better on the guitar. And you know it's going to take a lifetime to get any better at all. So we're all in this journey together. And if you don't know this stuff, just systematically learn a little bit every day. Force yourself to just think it, practice it, write it out, say it, whatever it takes, just like you're counting. I know that counting isn't fun, but what does it do? It makes you a groove master. Well, learning your theory will help you understand harmonic and melodic analysis. All right, the first thing I want to talk about, let's say we're in the key of C and you're using this chart. I'm going to assume you don't even know how to use this chart. There's some text on the top of it that explains what you're going to use, but if you simply read from left to right, you will see in the key of C, C is number one, D is two, E is three, and so on. You then have the names of these modes. Real quick overview of what the modes are. If we take that C major scale and you play it from C to C, it's going to be a C major scale or a C Ionian mode. If you take those same notes and you just move over one notch and play from D to D, it's D Dorian. Then E to E is E Phrygian and so on. So that's just a quick overview of the modes. That's not quite so important right now because we want to first look at the chord and see how it's, how it's analyzed. Look at the box down the lower left-hand corner. It says diatonic triads. A triad is a simple three-note chord, major, minor, augmented, or diminished. And diatonic means exclusive of the key. Therefore, if we are in the key of C, and you look in that little box, you will see, and this is where the revisions have taken place, you'll see uppercase Roman numerals for the major chords. One, four, and five will be major chords. So that means in the key of C, there'll be a C chord, an F chord, and a G chord. Now, I'm going kind of quickly here, so you might want to hit the pause button and think about what I've said. But then when we look at the minor chord, it says it could be a two, a three, or a six. Well, here's the way you have to use this chart. And ultimately, it's got to be in your head, and there's some things that you can figure out on the fingerboard. I'll show you how to do this later on, but that comes down the road. If I know I'm playing over a D minor chord, which is what we've been doing for the last 40 minutes, right? That tired D minor chord. It's getting kind of boring, but it'll get more fun. We, according to this theory rule here, we know that that D minor chord could function as a two chord in some key, a three chord in some key, or a six chord in some key. So you have to think backward. Well, this chart makes it pretty easy for you to do that. So if I have this D minor chord and I say it's functioning as a two chord, that's one viable alternative here. I go to the two column where it says Dorian and I read down, I don't have to go too far, do we? D is number two in the key of what? C. So that means that I could play a D Dorian mode over this, and that would simply be at C scale played from D to D. Okay? Now don't worry about this because we're going to have all these plotted out for you in just a few minutes. But if I choose to play Phrygian, have that chord function as a three chord, I go to the three column. Go down until you see D. Well, where do you go? You go a little past halfway, and D would be the three chord, D minor would be the three chord in the key of what? B flat major, right? So that means you'd play D Phrygian mode, which is mode three of a B flat major scale. Okay, now if your head's spinning, don't worry about it. We're going to be covering this stuff for a long time. Your final option was to say that that D minor chord could be functioning as a six chord. Go to your sixth column. D would be the sixth in what key? Well, you go a little past halfway, key of F major. So we have three possible theoretical keys. Now, this is important. I've coined this term street key. The street key is D minor, right? We get on stage, you say, Brad, we're going to jam in D minor. Okay, but what does D minor mean? Well, so far, it means three possible different tonalities. D Dorian, which means theoretically what key? C major. D Phrygian, which means theoretically the key of B flat. Or D Aeolian, which theoretically means the key of F major. Now, there's a lot of information what I've just said in the last three or four minutes. But this idea of saying we have a D minor chord, so there are three possible keys, three possible scales that could be used over this chord. 
I'm going to explain all the different options, and you could get another chart that'll make this a little easier to see from, a, from another vantage point. But this idea of analyzing the chords is critical. So put some time into this, think about it, and like I said, we're going to be hitting this a lot more in the future.